Very thankful to Pastor Roger for having invited me to share God's word today. And uh, what a powerful hymn that we sung just a few moments ago by uh, Patch the Pirate. And uh, it's a, a fitting illustration to what I propose to share this uh, afternoon. So if we uh, look at this month, gratitude, thankfulness, appreciation, these are the key words that we will focus on as we thank the Lord for 43 years of his faithfulness. If you listen to our Old Testament reading that Ellery read for us, for a moment you may have wondered, have we got our passages mixed up? Because as you listen to Ellery reading 1 Samuel 31, it does talk about uh, some very bizarre happenings. You read about bones and uh, bodies and being burnt and uh, all those kinds of things. And perhaps for a moment you may have wondered, has Pastor Ben got his passages mixed up? This is nothing to do with Thanksgiving. We are celebrating 43 years of God's faithfulness. And this passage talks about bodies and burning and bones and burials. What connection does this have? And strange as it may sound, this narrative found in 1 Samuel chapter 31 sets the context for what I propose to share this afternoon as we reflect on God's word. So the narrative talks about King Saul and his sons being slain in battle. And uh, the Philistines have desecrated their bodies. And then we are told in these verses that Ellery read that the people of Jabesh Gilead traveled all night, came to the spot, took down the bodies and gave Saul and his sons a decent burial. Their bodies were decomposed and so they did the best thing they could under the circumstances. They burnt the bodies and then they buried their bones. Now, you may have this burning question. Why did the men, why did the people of Jabesh Gili, why did they travel overnight? And that too in enemy territory, risking their lives and come all the way to provide Saul and his sons a decent burial. The answer to that lies in one simple word, and that is gratitude or being thankful. If you go back to 1 Samuel chapter 11, we find in that passage an incident that took place almost 40 years ago. And uh, in 1 Samuel chapter 11, you read about King Saul rallying the forces together and uh, delivering the people of Jabesh Gilead from the Ammonites under their king, Nahash. Four years later, Saul and his sons are dead. And the people of Jabesh Gilead never forgot what he did for them 40 years ago. And so as a symbol of gratitude, as an act of thanksgiving, they took this very, undertook this very risky journey and they went all the way, took their bodies and then they gave them a decent burial. From this narrative, there are two elements or two facets that I want to draw in terms of gratitude or in terms of thanksgiving. The first, element or the first principle or the first aspect of gratitude or thanksgiving that I wish to draw from this narrative is that expressing gratitude for the good done. That's the first thing that you see in this story. The people of Jabesh Gilead remembered what Saul did for them 40 years ago. They remembered how the Lord used Saul to deliver them from the hand of the Ammonites. And so they express gratitude for the good that is done. And even when it comes to our walk of faith, even as we look at our walk of faith as the followers of Christ, there are many things that we express gratitude for what God has done. We thank God for leading us into salvation. 
We thank God for providing us with the forgiveness of sins in our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God for his holy word. We thank God for people who have gone before us. The Lord has used them to lead us to a point of faith, mentor us, disciple us, nurture us in the faith. We thank God for protection. We thank God for provision. We are so grateful for all that the Lord has done. And last Sunday, we were treated to this wonderful PowerPoint presentation that Pastor Roger led us to. And for all of us, it was uh, traveling down memory lane. But most importantly, as we look through all those slides and as we travel down memory lane, at a deeper level, it was a powerful reminder of how God had led us all these years as a church, as a congregation. How the Lord used Pastor Roger, Pastor Paul, and then Dina to build and to lift this congregation to where it is today. Many lives have been touched. Many folk have been blessed through the ministry of Fairview Church in God. And even personally, as um, as a family, I'd like to say that this is our story as well. The Lord used people to bring us to the point of salvation. The Lord used people who shared the gospel with us. We became followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord used people to encourage us. The Lord used people to provide for us. And the Lord has used people who guided, nurtured, and discipled us. So the first is expressing gratitude for what has been done. And uh, as Nira prayed, there was one word that she kept repeating and reinforcing for emphasis. It was the word gratitude. And 43 years later, we stand, we look back and we say, God, we are so grateful for what you have done. But I want to look at a second level from this story. In our narrative, there is a second aspect of gratitude that I want to look at. And that is expressing gratitude when it is not easy to do so. Let me say that again, expressing gratitude when it is not easy to do so. In this story, the people of Jabez Gilead had to travel overnight. They had to travel through enemy territory. And it was not something that came easy to them. I'm sure some of them felt not so encouraged to come along on this journey. The circumstances did not dictate them to be very grateful. Everything around them was hostile. It was negative. But yet they undertook the journey. Now today, if somebody were to ask you, let's go on a trip, an overnight trip. And we want to travel some distance and thank somebody who has done so much for us. And on the way, we would stop for coffee and dinner and have some fellowship and fun. Would you like to join us? If that was the invitation, all of us would say, well, that sounds like a plan. Let me come along. But if they would say, we are taking an overnight trip to thank somebody, and uh, the weather is bad, it's minus 30, minus 40, it's snowing like nobody's business. And you know what, during certain parts, we may be going through the woods where we hear that bears have been sighted. And at that point, we might say, well, thank you, but no, thank you. You go ahead, I will stay at home and pray for you. But you see, as you look at this story, the people of Jabez Gilead, even though the situation was not pleasant, even though it was not something that was conducive for gratitude, they still undertook that journey. And I believe even in the Christian life, even as we walk with God, even as we are followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, there are situations, there are times, when it is difficult to be thankful. There are times when the circumstances around us do not make it easy at all to give thanks. How can you be thankful when a doctor's report comes back with not so good news? How can you be thankful when you hear of your family members who have been laid off? 
How can you be thankful when things are not going well in your workplace? How can you be thankful when somebody who's very close and special and near and dear to you has passed away, has passed on? And in the midst of that, you are called to be thankful. How is that possible? In fact, when such circumstances surround you, when you have such unpleasant, unexpected circumstances that surround you, you do not feel like giving thanks. It does not come easy. It does not come naturally. When God is good to us and all the blessings are flowing, then it is easy to pour out in thanksgiving. It is easy to pour our words out, our heart out and thank God. When the things around us are not going well and not flowing smoothly, then we struggle to give thanks. In fact, we cry out to God and some of us can identify with that. We cry out to God and say, God, why is this happening to me? Why are you allowing this in my life? Why are you spinning me round and round? Why do I feel like a ship without a rudder far out at sea? I have no direction, God. I do not know where I'm going. And some of us can identify with situations like that. And even in our lives, as God has prepared us for ministry, we can look back and identify with moments like that, where Humanly, naturally, we were not inclined to give thanks. But as we have grown to trust God as a family, I want to share with you a few insights that have helped us be thankful even when it's hard to do so. Expressing gratitude when it is not easy to do so. To help us understand these insights, I would like to use the image of a telescope. And I want for you to imagine that you are a, a, an astronomy enthusiast. I almost said astrology that could have gotten me into trouble, but astronomy enthusiast. You love watching the planets, the stars at night. This is your hobby. And so you go out and you buy yourself a very expensive telescope. And uh, you have uh, read the reviews. It's uh, a good product. People are raving about it. They're saying this is wonderful. It's a little costly, but you invest uh, a few hundreds of dollars and you buy yourself this telescope. You come home and you spend a few hours assembling it. And uh, as night sets in, you are ready to look out into the skies and you are ready to enjoy your time. Take in your hobby of astronomy. And as you look out to your disappointment, it is all blurred. You don't see Saturn, you don't see Jupiter, you don't see uh, all the lunar craters, nothing. It's all so blurred. And you are disappointed with the telescope. You think this was a bad deal. You think you were ripped off. And so you start complaining about this to your friends, to everybody you meet about the bad deal you've got in life. And then one of your friends, who is also an expert and, and uh, one who is also asked, he tells you there is nothing wrong with the telescope. Your telescope needs what he calls collimation. Now, this is a word that I discovered very recently when I was looking for this illustration. Collimation is when you align the lens and all the elements of the telescope so that you get the best light focused and you get a very clear image. And if all the lens and the elements or the lenses and the elements are not collimated or not in alignment, you can have a wonderful telescope, but you will not have a clear image. And so being thankful to God in difficult circumstances, being thankful to God when things are not going the way they ought to requires spiritual collimation of, I believe, three lenses. And I want to share these three lenses with you this afternoon. So as we talk about the subject of being thankful, we recognize it is easy to be thankful when all things are going well. 
But when things are not going as planned and the Bible tells us we have to be thankful in all circumstances. If you remember our second and third read from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 through 18, and Colossians chapter 4, Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, we are told to rejoice always, to pray without ceasing, and be thankful in all circumstances. For this is the will of God. Now we wish that verse 18 would say, be thankful in some circumstances. But the word of God makes it very clear. It's almost a command that we are called upon to be thankful in all circumstances. And it says that this is the will of God. Now you heard of people who love, who desire to be in the center of God's will. And if you read verse 16 of 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 17 and verse 18, you discover that those three lines capture the entire walk of faith. It captures the gist of the Christian faith in those three lines. And we are told that we have to be thankful in all circumstances. And when you come to our third reading, Colossians 3 verse 15, it talks about the peace of Christ. And then right at the end of that verse, we are told, and be thankful. As if to say, do not forget to be thankful. So scripture is very clear that we are called to be thankful Christians. The last time I preached, we talked about the fact that we are to be people of hope because our hope is eternal. And therefore we are called upon to be people of hope. Today, the word of God says we are called upon to be people who are thankful in all circumstances, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And so I want to provide three insights. I use the image of the telescope, use the concept of collimation, and I say these three lenses need to be in alignment. If the three lenses are not in alignment, then the image we have, the understanding we have of being thankful in all circumstances would not be effective. So you don't blame the telescope. You don't blame the product. You just blame what we need to get in alignment. So lens number one is to recognize that as a child of God, my life on earth is not the end. Scripture is very clear that we as children of God are part of an unshakable eternal kingdom. Our life on earth, the years that we spend on earth does not define us. The word of God is clear that we are part of an eternal kingdom, that we are people of eternal which means that no matter what happens to me on earth, no matter if I miss out on a few, few uh, so-called perks in life, I'm not going to miss out on eternity. As a child of God, that is where I am headed. Daniel and Job in the Old Testament had a very clear understanding of this. They talked about the future. They talked about how at the end of their lives, they will be raised up again and how they would be part of an eternal kingdom. And so that's the first lens, that our life on earth is not the end. And anytime we think about the people who have gone before us, our loved ones who may have gone ahead, we recognize that in Christ, we will see them again. Lens number two, through which we need to view and have collimation with regards to being thankful in all circumstances is the greatness and the sovereignty of God. Now, I'm sure you've heard of sermons on the greatness and sovereignty of God. But greatness of God is that we recognize that all things are possible with God. And when you and I focus on the greatness of God, then it is harder for us to complain. Just like in that illustration, uh, we were complaining about the telescope being a bad product, that we were given a bad deal, so on and so forth. When we focus on the greatness of God, it is harder to complain. 
But if I focus on the problem or the challenge that I am facing, and if that's all my focus is on, then it is very possible that with time I can become a very bitter person. And so focusing on the greatness of God is the second lens and focusing on the sovereignty. Now, sovereignty of God has been described in many ways by many preachers. But I like to see it like this, that when I say that God is sovereign, it means that he has all power. That's true. But it also means that he can take my messes. And as I trust him with my messes, he can turn them into messages. He can turn, he can take the ashes in my life. And as I trust him, he can turn them into something beautiful. When there are things that are rejected and cast aside and I place them before God, God as sovereign God takes those broken pieces, puts them together. And as I trust him, he fashions and he forms something of immense beauty. He transforms my pain into something beautiful as I trust him. And that is lens number two, the greatness and the sovereignty Lens number three is to recognize that I am a unique creation of God and I have a, that God has a distinct plan and a purpose for my life. And let me say that again. Lens number three is to recognize that I am a unique individual and God has a distinct plan and purpose for my life. The mirror does not define who I am. Social media does not define who I am. My friends do not define who I am. The truest picture of who I am comes from God's word, where God's word clearly says that he has unique, distinct plans for me. And the plans he has for me are very different to the plans that he has for other people. So when I have this lens in collimation, then I recognize that other people may be making progress. Other people may be having a different lifestyle, but I recognize that I am a unique being and God has a distinct and a very clear purpose and a plan for my life. Let me ask you a question. How would you feel If you are 17 years old, I want you to go back to the time uh, when you were 17 years old. For some of us, that means going back a few years, but for some of us, it might mean going back a few more years. You're 17 years, and then you are labeled as the world's most ugliest person. And at 17, your friends tell you, you know, do yourself a favor, just kill yourself. This is exactly the story of Lissy Valasquez. Lissy Valasquez was 17 when she was labeled as the world's ugliest lady or the world's ugliest boy. And why is that so? Because she had a very, very rare condition where her face was deformed and she could not put on any body weight at all. And some of us might say, well, that's a wonderful problem to have. We struggle to keep our weight down. But uh, on a serious note, Lissy Valesquez had a serious and a rare medical condition that uh, caused a lot of facial uh, abnormalities, a lot of uh, deformation, deformation. And also there was, uh, she was blind in one eye. And so her friends would make fun of her. And uh, she was labeled as the world's ugliest woman on social media. But one day in her life, Lizzie found faith in God and her life was transformed. And in an interview, here's what she said. She said, Jesus chose not to heal me, but he chose to hold me. And he said, the deeper the pain, she said, the deeper the pain, the tighter the embrace. Let me say that again. Jesus chose not to heal me, but to hold me. And then she said, the deeper the pain, the tighter the embrace. 
and the social media made fun of Lisi Velasquez, but she has found faith in God and uh, she is now a world renowned motivational speaker. She has not been healed, she still looks the same, but she has a strong sense of inner confidence, which only God can give her. Her TED talk is titled, How Do I Define Myself? And it has over 12 million views. This is a lady, this is a young girl who was labeled as the world's ugliest person, defined by the world in a very negative manner. But as she found faith in God, she saw the transforming power of Jesus Christ and what God could do with her. And she realized that her truest identity is what God says in our self. Two weeks ago, I jumped in on um, the Friday Bible study and uh, Dillo was leading us in Psalm 139. We had a wonderful session. I, I took in a lot of insights. I was blessed by it. And then Dillo talked from Psalm 139 verse 14. And it's that famous line, fearfully and wonderfully. And then Dillo said, we often talk about the fearfully and wonderfully made part. There's a little expression before that. Verse 14 begins where the psalmist David says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully. When we stand in front of the mirror, when we face the circumstances and the challenges of life, we can say I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. But we need to be able to say, I praise you because God, I am fearfully and wonderful. And so as we bring this reflection to a close, we can be thankful in difficult circumstances when we recognize that we need to collimate three lenses. Number one is that as a child of God, my life on earth is not the end. Lens number two, I look at my life from the greatness and sovereignty of God. Lens number three, I look at life recognizing that I am a unique child of God and God does have a distinct plan and purpose for my life. And even as we look at our lives as a family, I can tell you that all these three lenses have been very important in our journey. In our journey from the day when we were called to faith, from the day when we chose to follow the Lord, from the day when we moved from location to location, from uh, during the days when we served the Lord during the intense civil war in Sri Lanka, God has been our strength, not only in the good times. We have been thankful to God, not only in the good times, but in the not so good times as well. We have been able to express gratitude even when it was not easy to do so because we recognize these three lenses. As I close, I want to share with you three possible prayers that we can pray as we are facing or if we are facing difficult circumstances. Maybe some of you are going through a difficult patch right now where you are waiting upon the Lord for a breakthrough, but nothing seems to be happening. And you're wondering, how can I be thankful? You have been praying for healing, but healing has been delayed. You have been praying for a loved one, but nothing much is happening in terms of restoration and reconciliation. Maybe there are certain things that are weighing heavily upon your heart, and it is hard for you to be thankful to God. And during this season, in this month, as we talk about being thankful, as we talk about being grateful, as we talk about gratitude, I want to suggest three prayers that will be of encouragement to you because it has encouraged me and us as a family. The first prayer to think about and pray as you go through a difficult phase in your life is, Lord, I thank you for trusting me enough to give me this situation. Think about this quote-unquote unpleasant situation that you are facing a difficult situation where the circumstances are not going well. It's not flowing in the right direction. You're facing an insurmountable challenge and it's hard to be thankful. 
One prayer would be, Lord, I thank you for trusting me enough to give me this situation. In the sovereignty of God, God has allowed it. And it's part of your life right now. And we need to thank God that he has trusted us with this situation. And our prayer ought to be, God, you've trusted me with this situation. Enable me to be, uh, enable me to be a good steward and respond in the proper way. Prayer number two is, Lord, I am grateful for what you will teach me. Reveal to me about yourself through this situation. In every challenge we face, as we go through that difficult phase, the difficult time, the difficult moment, that difficult season, as we thank God that he is going to reveal something about himself that we did not know before. As we spend more time in prayer, as we spend more time looking into his word, God has now got our full attention. We will discover things about God that we have. Theologians use two words, the knowability of God and the incomprehensibility of God. When we start our journey of faith, we know God. And that knowability of God keeps growing through the circumstances of God. We continue to know more things about our God, our Lord Jesus Christ, whom we follow. So that's the second prayer that we might pray as we face a difficult face. The third is, Lord, I thank you for how through this situation you will transform me into an instrument of your peace, an instrument of your blessing. I thank you, Lord, that through this situation you will transform me into your instrument of peace and blessing. Let me ask you a question. Let's say you had to visit a counselor, and one counselor had all the theoretical knowledge. He or she had all the theoretical knowledge, the concepts and everything was in place. Anytime you go to this counselor, they would suggest you, here are three things you must do. Here are five steps you must follow. It was all part of a well-organized process. That's counselor number one. But you have counselor number two, who also knows all the theoretical concept, has the body of knowledge, as we call it, is able to prescribe what needs to be done. But counselor number two also has been through experiences, has faced challenges, the sort of experiences that you have been through. Which one would you prefer to work with? Obviously, counselor number two. Because counselor number two is able to empathize with what you are going through. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, the Apostle Paul talks about our God being a God of all comfort. He comforts us in all our trouble so that we can comfort other people. And I like that progression of the Apostle Paul's thought. God comforting us. And then we comforting other people with the comfort we have received. So prayer number three, Lord, I thank you that you will transform me through this situation into being an instrument of your blessing. So I hope and I pray that these thoughts on being thankful, even when you do not feel like being thankful, being grateful when the situation does not call for being grateful, that these thoughts from God's word will enable us to live out 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18, where the word of God says, be thankful in all circumstances for this is the will of God. May God bless the reflection of his word this evening. Pastor Roger.